Module 2, Digitrack Configuration. Module Objectives. In this module, we will be discussing the addition of a controller and the basic setups that a system administrator would go through. We will also be upgrading the CCM through the software and discussing options using a Flash Master. Introduction to control zones for applications for both standard and master and how to use the control zones in alarm actions to automate the controller. When a system needs a controller added, the system's administrator should have the following information at hand. The MAC address of the SNP2, a static IP address and subnet for the controller, what door line modules are wired, where the controller is located, and a naming convention. Adding a controller using the SNP2 is rather easy if the above information is at hand, but if you are guessing, it can turn into a nightmare. A static IP address is necessary and should be received from the IT department prior to adding the controller. The location of the controller will enable a quick reset if you do not know the blue button was done. Line modules will add thousands of alarms when a controller goes online, so it makes establishing an MA easy if you know which ones were used. The SNP2 board is the connection to the security network. The MAC address is easier to read when the controller is still in the box. If you are only adding one controller, it is not an issue, but if you are adding five controllers, it could take a long time trying to figure out which controller is wired to which door. Only the last six digits are labeled on the SNB2. The daughter board holds the network cable connection. Termination of a SNB2 is easy, as most SNB2s are networked on their own port. The termination of the switch is on or towards the panel. They are either all on for the first and last SNB2 in the chain or off if in the middle, as if three controllers are wired by 485. SNP2 LEDs. P1 is the connection of the network and the controller. A green and yellow usually means the SNP2 has lost communication. I usually call this the Mary Jo Wigwag, and the simple solution is to search and double-click the SNP2 configuration window and click OK and click OK. This has worked for me in the classroom for many years. It may also be a signal the encryption key may need to be reset. Sometimes just a software reset works. I always try the easiest way first and then progress until I validate the connection in the event viewer. P2 is the RS-485 connection and we will be adding a subordinate controller to show the communication between the two panels. P3 is communication from the server to the panel. Encryption is a powerful way to ensure the communication from the server to the controllers is secure. With an AES Rindel asymmetric 128-bit block data encryption, the data cannot be intercepted. The second set of switches work the following way. This image shows all the switches off or towards the door of the controller. The first switch in the second bay of switches is the encryption key. This works with the software. The next two switches are reserved for future development and should be left off. The last switch is the Xbox and should be turned on. Xbox is a device that allows two controllers to communicate when wired with hard wire. Even if the SNP2 is a single panel, it should be turned on to remind you when adding a controller in the software. It goes port, Xbox, controller. When a SNP2 is added to the network, the address is usually set as address 1. The switches work from the bottom upwards for addresses. The speed of the SNP connection is currently set to 9600 baud or all switches off. This can be altered with the first two switches at the top of the third bay of switches. Remember, if a net MUX is used, all the SNP2 speeds must be set at 9600.
This only applies when there are controllers running 485 below for speeds between the panels. SNB 2 is connected to the network. Use standard Ethernet speeds. Now to add a port. Expand Digitrack configuration. Expand XNet and add a new XNet port. Select XNet 2 protocol, the only protocol for SNP 2s Search for the SNP 2 by its MAC address. Double click and assign a static IP address, a subnet, and a gateway if necessary. Notice that port 10001 is the default. Here is an administrator hint. Before you add a controller, go to the preferences of the alarm viewer and uncheck the restore alarm viewer on new alarm option. You do not need the alarm viewer popping up on every new alarm while you are adding a controller. Increasing the alarm's maximum right before you go live will make clearing the setup alarms much easier once the controller comes online and dumps the buffer. Add an Xbox. The Xbox is how two controllers communicate through 485. Control zone triggers may cross panels. Anti-passback zones may also cross panels. A NetMux allows for up to 63 controllers to be wired together with encryption. My suggestion is to just turn on the Xbox switch when addressing the SNB2. It will remind you to add the Xbox when creating a port and also enable the function if you are wiring multiple controllers together. The NetMux is a device that repeats the signal to controllers downstream and can allow one master SNB to broadcast to one or all other controllers. When deciding how to wire up controllers, think of this option. Add a controller. When the port and Xbox go online, you will see a note in the event viewer that the system sees a controller, but it is undefined. Here's a hint. If the system does not see a controller, I would delete the port, blue button the controller, and start again. Review question not graded. You must use XNet2 protocol when adding a controller with a SNP2 to a network using Ethernet. True or false? Make your selection. Line modules. When the controller goes online, the line module default of 2 will cause all line modules, not in compliance, to cause alarm. Inputs are dry contacts. When the voltage changes, that causes an alarm. The advanced settings in the service control manager, along with the status viewer, will show the actual voltages. This is why I disable the controller when putting one online, as the polling will initiate as soon as the server connects to the controllers. This will cause multiple alarms. An administrator hint. Administrators that know the system will also disable the alarm viewer from auto-populating on a new alarm. Establishing the correct line modules on the doors and expansion inputs before enabling the controller will save time. The installer 
should write down the following information to make this a really quick install. Controller for what doors? The MAC address on the SNB2. Line modules installed on each input device. This will save you lots of time. The rest of the properties can be established once the controller is online and responding. Controller setup. Right click the newly added controller. All the setups can be programmed without the system being online. The CCM will state 0.0.00 until a connection is made. Controller properties, general tab. The description field should hold the location of the controller. Additional command sets to download will make more sense after we've talked about control zones and command sets. Hardware configuration will update once the controller is online. Code tamper is an attempt of an invalid code or card to enter a reader with no access allowed. This can disable a door relay with a lockout time for minutes. This can be an asset if the building is wired with perimeter doors on one controller and interior doors on another, as the code tamper can be turned off on the interior doors by setting the invalid penalty timer to 1 and the threshold timer to 99. Special needs are time extensions for those that may need more time to enter a secure door and not set the alarms off. This is useful for ADA personnel and only their credentials trip the additional time. 300 seconds is equal to 5 minutes. Tag. This allows a time zone to trigger an alarm on all doors of this controller. If you remember in the operator course, we created a master time zone for after business hours. I used that in this position so a night guard would know if someone came into the facility after hours. One, the person would have access, and two, the night guard could then verify by photo call up in the alarm viewer. Alert uses the five beats on a scramble pad when a credential is presented. Remember, when issuing a PIN credential, the option of adding a duress digit was possible. Here is where you must tell the controller that you are using duress. This triggers the CCM to trigger the duress alarm relay. Empty local alarm via reset. Before you check enable on the controller to bring it online, press the blue button for three seconds and all the alarms currently in the buffer will disappear. Enable Global Credential Management. Here a systems administrator can decide whether this controller will stand alone on the network or be hardwired to another system, and if so, with globalization applied. Only with a 485 connection can two controllers communicate without the need of the server. This is very useful, and we will be adding an M2 controller to show globalization. Global MCV means the triggers of control zones on one panel can broadcast across the wire to all controllers underneath. The M8 has four distinct relays that are designated to alarms. The Alarm Actions tab will show all the alarms and which relay they trigger. Alarm relays have timers that can also be changed. The default is 60 seconds. The Map to Relay gives a systems administrator the ability to trigger more than one item when an alarm relay is fired. These can be expansion relays with the power of triggering control zones. All alarm actions are using time zones, so use that to your advantage when designing your system. Years ago, the system could be programmed from a keypad. This is not an option for velocity. What a systems administrator should note, however, is the system code of 123 and change that to eliminate the miscellaneous line item in the event viewer. Also, disable should be checked to eliminate the reset of system code blue button option. The rest is old architecture and not used at this time. Disable reporting during time zones. This is used today to remove the access grant transactions for the eight doors on this system. This can easily be tied to a time zone, and when 2,000 or more users are going through the doors, eliminate the line item in the event viewer during that time period. All local printer setups 
are really not applicable today. Disabled reporting, however, has many options for the system's administrator to implement. Disable is the key word, and this toggles on and off the choice to try it and choose not to use the feature. Internal events, if checked, this will eliminate the time zone line item for starting and stopping time zones. This can save line items in the event viewer. Transaction events turns off the code generated transactions, but not the alarm. It would depend on how many users are on the controller database. Invalid codes. This I uncheck as the default is checked. What this provides is the actual numbers from the keypad entered as an invalid pin. It also provides a match number when a card is presented and is not enrolled in the system. This is very useful information for a systems administrator. Time zone state changes. After a system has been established, this will also eliminate the line item in the event viewer for time zones changing. Also a useful item on a large system and can be toggled on and off. Remember the advantages. These choices are only for one controller. Each controller on the system may have different settings. Once again, a systems administrator should know where these options are to work with technical support or professional services. These options can assist in diagnosing problems of a sophisticated application. Note the warning, so do not just toggle on and off. Passback. To initiate passback, or really anti-passback, the controller needs to have at least reporting checked, otherwise this is disabled. Reporting. This turns on passback and sends a message to the event viewer there has been a violation with a name and a door. The user has no indication there is a passback violation and the credentials still work. When alarm is checked, the alarm viewer will populate with the alarm, person's name, and door, but the credential is still allowed access. Only when you select deny access will the passback violation cause a credential not to be used unless it's forgiven. Passback options by time. So during working hours of 8 to 5, passback is ignored and after hours passback is enabled. It really depends on the facility security levels. Enable single zone allows for a specific door group access to lock out other door groups until the area is unoccupied. Report occupancy. Now that entry and exit is enabled, the controller can count in and out of zones. This can be useful to trigger control zones that can turn on and off devices. So back to control zones. Remember, a standard control zone can include one or more points. If standards are used, the control mode timers are triggered. If master control zones are used, then assigned control functions are used. There are 63 zones and each one can have different controls assigned. We will be discussing this further at a door properties window. So by now you can see how important control zones can be in designing a system. So here are the basics. There are 191 standard control zones on each controller. You always select time zone always. One through eight are doors and X1 through X54 are expansion points. The action determines if they are relays or inputs. Right click 01 through 016 for reader properties. The same as door properties, just a shortcut. Tagging a control zone enables the initiation of control zones to send a tag alarm to the alarm viewer each time the standard control zone is triggered. The alert will beat five times at a scramble pad to indicate the control zone has initiated when a pin triggers the control zone. All controllers should have SPV1 established for all doors. You will see how this is used throughout the system as we discover control zones. I leave the SPV in front as I use the numbering to keep logical order for when I'm creating an application. The CCM does not care, but I do. Each standard control zone triggers the control mode timer of the points included. Each control mode timer can be different. Multiple points can be triggered at once.
master control zones are where points defined in standard control zones are assigned a function or action. This ties back to the control function hierarchy. From 192 to 255, each controller has master control zones to program. Multiple standard control zones may be triggered at the same time. Set a threat level can automatically be done from a master control zone trigger. Tag and alert work the same way as standard. If multiple controllers are hardwired together, a master control zone can broadcast to other controllers and initiate actions. This is done through the global ID and all master control zones that have the same global ID will trigger. I will come back to this feature after I have established the M2 downstream. For now, just remember the magic is in the control zone, and anywhere a standard control zone can be applied, a master can be applied instead. Alarm actions can trigger control zones. This is where magic can automate a controller's actions. If you create a standard control zone using timers of the points and apply it to one of the 360 alarm actions on the controller, then each time the alarm happens, a standard control zone would trigger and the points would enable for how long the timer was set for. If you created a master control zone using the point selected in the standard control zone, then the action would remain until the release was issued or a return to normal triggers another master control zone. Remember the hierarchy of control functions apply here also. Before the SNP2 encryption, SNP had a way to randomize communication. This is not used, but you can tell security has always been a top priority concern with our systems. Before you enable the controller, set the line modules to eliminate the polling started by the server on connection. The alarms produced immediately from all line modules that are out of spec. DTLM2s are the default. This also includes expansion inputs, which need a line module 1 attached and are also defaulted to 2. Trust me, even if you just set the line modules and program the controller doors after the fact, you will appreciate the lack of fighting the system while you are trying to set up the controller. Name. The door name should be able to locate the door in the facility. This appears on all the viewers and will make identifying issues easier. Direction. A radio button will determine if there are entry and exit readers. Remember to name both, as when defining door groups, it would be easy to forget an exit reader. Also in the viewers, the identification of entry and exit will also make it easy to identify where someone is going. Auto relock. How do you want the locking device to handle the door? Options really depend on the locking mechanism a difference from an electric strike lock and a mag lock. On open, will auto unmask the input and relock the door when it is open. On close, will wait until the door is closed before unmasking and relocking the door. Disable will disable the feature. Enable the two-person rule. A simple check will tell the door that two authorized credentials must be submitted to the door reader prior to the relay releasing the door. This can be toggled on and off by a systems administrator on a high secure door. The timer to allow two credentials is set up on the passback tab of the controller. Remember, each controller has different settings. The credentials by default are established to use this feature just by checking the box on the door property, as each credential by default is set to a normal two-person rule. The other options of A and B utilize the system's ability to regulate which two credentials can gain access grants. Report one door open too long when unlocked, the door must have a door contact to report. The unlocked door could then not be propped open, and a DOTL alarm would still populate the alarm viewer. Report door open too long when unlocked gives an administrator the ability to verify the door is secure. This requires a door contact. Extended access, the ability for a credential to override the DOTL alarm and prop the door open. Very useful for shipping, receiving, or IT installing new server racks. 
override timer is how many minutes maximum the credential can choose, and the warning timer will beep the scramble pad to alert the credential that more time or a reset is needed. As we discussed in the first module, this has some advantages over the properties set up. This will override, and color-coordinated templates can make visual checks easy for an operator. If the delay is set to zero, the window may be left on the monitor, and the last access person will remain on the screen until a new entry is made. Very convenient for a high security door when the operator is asked who the last person in the room was. The Entry Reader tab. The reader name for an entry reader can be beneficial to an operator even without an exit reader for direction of which way the person is heading. Match reader. If using a Hirsch CR40L, the bezel must be enabled through the software as there is not a dip switch. LED reverse. The default is red and it can be turned around to green. The LED does not indicate a valid credential it's just an indicator the card was read by the reader. Enable Weekend Hex Pass-Through will match up with the enrollment devices so the enrolled card will read correctly. Remember the three devices that must match up are Enrollment Manager, Device Configuration, and the reader that is enabled with the Match to setting. The door properties that correspond to the enrollment setting and the reader match setting that will match up to the above. All three must be in sync to have the card read seamlessly and give an access grant. We have discussed threat levels and how it works in conjunction with the threat authority for credentials and disabling the credential. Now as a systems administrator, you have the advantage to actually disable the reader at the door at a certain threat level, no matter what the authority, no one will be admitted. In an emergency situation, even your security staff would need protection, and this established will not allow an entrance to a volatile situation. Threat levels go from 0 to 99 and are defined in velocity configuration. Disable CCOTV is another way a threat level can be used in a facility. Card and code only during time zone is a way that credentials that are IDF 4 or 5 can override the use of dual during the time zone established. CCOTV can be implemented on interior doors for easy access during working hours. Custom card codes and special handling work together with device configuration in Enrollment Manager. Just like hex pass-through, all three items must be in sync for the smart credential to access the door. Remember, if entry and exit readers are used, both MAC boards must also be established with the correct custom switch settings. If a scramble pad is used at a door, then these options are available. Silent operation is a nice option. However, if you turn off the reader, any warning timers will not sound. Also, card reads will not sound. Green LED when relay is active is my favorite as the LED indicates the door is unlocked. Report access grant is a choice, and as a systems administrator, you can remove this from a high volume door such as a lobby. The reader will still indicate when an access is denied. Use keypad numeric LEDs as an enunciator allows the number pad to be used for other purposes, such as minute countdown or occupancy counts. This works in conjunction with the allow user count display and both must be checked to operate correctly. Deny codes under duress. Remember, duress only works with a keypad and triggers the duress relay on the controller, and the controller must be activated or the CCM will ignore the duress. We have discussed how the controller passback is established. Here is where each reader is defined into the passback zone. Each reader has two addresses to fire the relay. When entry and exit readers are used, the passback zones are established here at the reader properties window. Passback zones go from 00 unknown, not recorded, to zone 63. Remember, if controllers are hardwired together, the passback zones are global. It really helps me to draw a simple map of the area and label the readers when identifying passback zones. 
Timed anti-passback allows the system's administrator to set a time whereby the credential cannot re-enter until a set number of minutes. This can prevent an in-out-in-out scenario. Enable card code only access during time zone goes back to the IDF of the credential, and those credentials that have card and code for entry may only have to use one during this time zone. It helps when passback is enabled to speed up access grants. The exit reader has all the options of the entry reader, which is an advantage. Remember, using smart cards, the settings must match the entry reader. Passback zones should also follow the exit from the zone established in the entry reader, but you can navigate credentials in one door and out another. The Who's Inside window is a live representation of credentials and zones occupied. Passback zones 1 through 63 correspond to the passback zones in Who's Inside. This icon eliminates non-used zones. This icon allows for selected credentials to be forgiven. Request zone information gives a quick update from the readers. Here, a quick muster report can be operated without going to report manager. Suspend zone refresh works just like stop scrolling in the event viewer. The last two icons, one is to toggle on and off the zone pane and the other is to go to help topic. The Relay tab has attributes that correspond with the control zones. Door mode timers are associated with access. Control mode timers associate with control functions. Control trigger, which starts the control mode timer. This can be useful for an operator that has access to a right click and functions, so can allow more time for a relay to stay actuated instead of issuing a momentary access grant of six seconds or unlocking the door and forgetting to relock it when a delivery is made. All timers can be set to toggle zero on and off or 8100 seconds, which is 2 hours and 15 minutes. All relays have the ability to use quarter seconds. Normal state of the LED by default is to energize the relay when triggered, but can be reversed to always energize until triggered. Be careful if you reverse the default, as I have lost time in troubleshooting why a control zone application did not work until I realized the relay was reversed. All relays can be turned on and off by time zones. This is powerful, as it also overrides all control functions that may be tried at the relay, such as force off. Control functions are powerful, and the hierarchy is important to understand when applying to relays. There are three options under time zones. Actuate, which energizes the relay during the time zone applied. Master time zones also may be used, and the combination of holiday schedules allow for the relay to only actuate during the time specified. Disable relay. This means the door is out of commission, and even with an authorized credential, you are not getting in. This can be beneficial when let's say a receptionist has a lunch break and that lobby area is empty. By disabling the door between noon and one, all deliveries or access to the facility would need to use another door. Auto clear after time zone is a great way for a systems administrator to double check that after the time zone, someone did not unlock the door and leave it open after hours. This will clear all control functions except a lock down or lock open. Now to control zones. We have introduced that a control zone can include one or more points on the system. The standard control zones trigger the control mode timers. Master control zones allow you to assign the control function. Any property window can trigger a standard or master control zone. You can start to see that the points and triggering control zones can be very powerful. The input and line modules are what produce the abundance of alarms when a controller is added to the system. This can be easy if the installers provide a roadmap of what line modules are on which point. Enable. This can really be useful for a systems administrator where operators are receiving thousands of alarms from a line module 
and just disabling it while a check is done can be very beneficial. Through the off normal window in velocity, a record of those points that have been disabled will allow a systems administrator to verify the fix. Options for the RQE depend on the device wired. The input will trigger an alarm each time the door contact is opened without an access grant to mask the point. If a RQE button is selected, then on a crash bar release, the input would mask, but the crash bar would trigger the relay to allow access. Each option gives the systems administrator choices. Trigger relay and mask works with an RQE device as an access grant. Retrigger is used when a motion RQE is wired, and as long as the device detects motion, the door is masking the alarm. Timers. Here the timers for this particular door can be altered. How heavy is the door? And will 12 seconds be enough if there is a door closure on the door? If a keypad is used at the door, will a beep initiate before the alarm for DOTL goes off? Entry delay and exit delay for when the reader is on the secure side of the door to allow time to set. Report door open too long when unlocked. An option for an alarm to notify when someone has unlocked the door and propped it open. Mask tamper when door contact is masked. If a line module 3 is used and a tamper is wired to a device at the door, this option allows the tamper to mask when the access grant is made. If the tamper is wired to a matchboard above the door, then this would not be an option. Enable the controller. At minimum, all the line modules have been set. Check Enable on the controller properties. Right-click and select Download Configuration. The event viewer will indicate the controller is online and responding. Clear any alarms in the alarm viewer. Review question not graded. Establishing the correct line modules on the inputs prior to enabling the controller will cause less alarms, true or false. Make your selection. CCM upgrade. The CCM firmware may need an upgrade when new features are enabled in Velocity. The steps are download the new CCM version from the website, import using the CCM import wizard, start the download and wait. Do not interrupt the process. Notification will occur in the event viewer when completed. Website download. Be sure to read the release notes as the systems administrator needs to make the choice to upgrade with complete knowledge. Once the download has been transmitted to your system, the next step is to use the import wizard. The CCM import is actually a wizard to change the extension from .ccm, which will go across the internet, to .bin, which is needed to import into Velocity. To start the CCM update, select Update CCM Firmware. Once you've started, you need to let the system complete the upgrade. Do not touch the server or clients. This also means this controller is offline and there is no access to the controller. Note the warning, do not interrupt the process. To begin, select Yes. Here the CCM import will list all the CCM imports with the most recent populated. System administrators need to know that CCMs may be downgraded also. Note the event viewer notes the download in progress. While we wait, a review of the warning message. System code is 123 at controller M8 master. Do you remember what that means and how to fix it? Wait for it. The system will tell you after the controller logs back online. Note the encryption key was not reset when the system rebooted in this process. When upgrading the SNP2 firmware, it also works the same way and the system is still offline. The CCM Flashmaster, an alternative. The Flashmaster is a board with the CCM firmware chip in place to attach to a controller and flash the CCM. Advantages, the CCM upgrades in a few minutes. Disadvantage, 
the CCM loses all of the database and will need the database replaced with a complete download from the server. When is this an option? When a site must upgrade lots of controllers at once, where a 45-minute to 2-hour upgrade per controller is not an option. CCM upgrades may only be done one at a time, and the controller is completely offline when the upgrade is happening. Control Zones and Applications We have discussed the basics of control zones. Standard control zones may have one or more points and use the control mode timers. Master control zones assign an action to the points and may trigger multiple standard control zones at the same time. Each controller has 360 alarm actions that may utilize the control zones to automate the system. Control zones are the heart of the velocity system. Standard control zones use the control mode timer. Time zone always is always used. The points 1 through 8 are the doors of the controller. The X1 through X64 are the expansion points of the controller. Property windows may be accessed by a right click at the point. Control zones allow control from one point to multiple points. X1 may be used for an input when paired with the function mask or relay when paired with the function trigger. Virtual relays may be used to trigger alternate control zones in applications. Master control zones are where you are in control. There are no timers involved unless you place additional standard control zones under trigger. Multiple standard control zones may be added, but serve only to identify the point or points needed for the action selected. We have discussed the threat levels can be set, and when controllers are hardwired together, a global command may trigger multiple master control zones. Now to build an application. First, you have an idea. You want the controller to take action when something happens. The first question to ask is, do you want the point or points to release automatically when the action is initiated? Yes or no. Remember, standard control zones select a point or points and use the control mode timers, which can be set differently on each point with quarter-second timers. If the answer is no, you will need to create a master control zone with the action, knowing that you will need to provide a release as no timer is involved. Master control zones have the selection of point or points, but the control is now established by the action. Actions have hierarchy and will override lower functions. Unless released, the points will remain in the function assigned. <coughs> when using master control zones, the function hierarchy is most important to remember. Does this master control zone supersede any other applications that may be programmed on the point? Time zones on a point will supersede all control functions except for lock down and lock open. Application 1, a buzzer. To explain the process, I will be using a simple application of a door buzzer sounding when the door open to long alarm happens. Security notes that during the winter months, the cafeteria door to the patio is propped open and facilities is complaining as the heat is going outside. To resolve the problem, a buzzer is purchased and wired to an expansion relay to sound when the door open to long happens hoping to deter the employees from propping open the door. So for my example, I am going to extend the control mode timer to 20 seconds of sounding the buzzer when the door open to long alarm happens, as six seconds would not be enough of a deterrent to stop employees <coughs> from propping the door open. Now to create the standard control zone to trigger the buzzer. Now to apply the standard control zone to the alarm action DOTL. I know the DOTL alarm is a part of the controller alarm actions, so the buzzers should trigger automatically when applied to this alarm action. Now I'm going to trigger a DOTL alarm for door to the cafeteria. Note the DOTL alarm, the expansion relay fired, 
and remained on for 20 seconds of the control mode timer. So what's wrong with this application? What happens if the person just stands there with the door open after 20 seconds? No buzzer continues to sound, so they continue to hold the door open. So the idea for the application is good, but it's not complete. If you increase the door mode timer to two minutes, what happens when the door closes? The buzzer is still sounding as it is tied to the control mode timer. So let's use a master control zone. If we create a master control zone to force on the buzzer and attach it to the alarm action of DOTL, the sounder will now follow the door contact. Remember the system also needs to be told to release the sounder when the contact is closed. Now you understand the differences between using standard and master control zones. With this in mind, you can see alarm actions are very powerful to automate activity. Here a master control zone is created not to only lock down the doors, but force on the lights and unmask the alarm points. When using master control zones, the action stays in place until a release is issued. Here, a master control zone release has been created for the CZ off in alarm actions. Or, what do you want to happen when the alarm is returned to normal? For my example, I want to be able to reset. This, however, is not the only place to reset. A right click in the status viewer on each point will also allow for the release. Select the points first with a standard control zone and then decide to use the control mode timers or master control actions. Each property window has the ability to trigger standard or master control zones. When using alarm actions, both standard and master control zones may be applied. Administrator hint, the number one reason an application does not work is because time zone never is selected time zone never means it will never happen. Both time zones in the standard and master must be selected as always for the control zones to work. Review question not graded. Every controller has standard and master control zones, true or false. Make your selection. The answer is true. Even the alarm panel, the M16, has standard and master control zones along with alarm actions. Now to add a subordinate M2 panel downstream using RS-485 to show the globalization options. First to note is the reversal of the wiring for transmit and receive. Here is my color coordinated image that I used to get it right the first time. Now to address the M2 SNB2. The termination switches are all off as this will be the last in the line of controllers. The encryption key is on as the M8 is encrypted. This will mean if I have to reset encryption, I will need to do both panels. The Xbox key is off. The master SNB2 is the only one with the Xbox, which provides the globalization possibilities. <coughs> Address 2 is selected. That would mean the first switch in the image would be off and the next one up would be on for address 2. All controllers must have a different address when wiring downstream. Now to add the controller. The port will be the same, so select the Xbox and select Add New Controller. Name the controller and be sure to select the correct address and the correct model type. Once again, to avoid multiple alarms when the server starts to pull, I am not enabling until I have established the line modules. Before checking enable, I have changed all the line modules to the correct line module type, including the expansion inputs. I have renamed the doors and applied any identity for the Model 2, created a standard control zone for all doors, which should be on all panels, and last, I'm using the alphanumeric to order the controllers for my benefit. Review question not graded. Adding a new controller can be made easier 
even with the SNB2 if the following information is handy. The SNB2 MAC address, a static IP address and subnet now. Line review question not graded. A systems administrator should read the release notes prior to establishing the plan on a CCM upgrade for the controllers. Review question not graded. Standard and master control zones reside on all controllers, true or false. Review question not graded. For two controllers to communicate between the SNP2s using master control zones broadcast capability, a RS-485 wire must connect the two SNP2s and the master SNP2 must have the Xbox switch enabled, true or false. Review question not graded. To eliminate the line item in the event viewer, warning, system code is 123 at controller. The controller properties window must only be opened to the setup tab, true or false. Please program the following control zones on your demo unit to be used in the next module. Standard control zone 1, all doors. Standard control zone 2, expansion relays 1 through 4. And standard control zone 3, expansion inputs 1 through 4. When you are ready, please proceed to the quiz for module 2, Digitrack Configuration.